I'm a very sentimental person. This has been a real deep podcast. I didn't mean it to be so. <laughs> the deaf is stolen. That was not funny. Oh! <laughs> it's the traditional hero arc. You want to see the strong... There's no heroes here. No, no, no. Come no. on. No, no, no. And I still think to this day that they probably are still, you know, thrusting no. around in the dark, oh, no, so I think, to speak. I think... No, don't. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. How are we today? This is Paul speaking from Considered and Conceited, and with me today, as always, and always smiling, is... Me. That's right. <laughs> and the people who have only never listened to us before, would you like to give them your name? Pip. There we go. It's not a hard one to remember. No, I know. It's just the way you introduce me every single week. I'm thinking, you make it sound like someone else is going to be sitting here. Excuse me. I do not introduce you like anything any single week. I introduce you differently each and every week because it's what I do. Yes, but you always make it sound like someone else is going to be sitting here. And it's always me. And I don't want to disapp- disappoint people, but I, it's always me. You know, I know you don't like to disappoint people, <laughs> but... <laughs> you know, you've started really early being unkind. Uh, look, it's, it's, we, we don't have time for that. <laughs> we really don't have time because it is time. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, please be upstanding for the podcast pick of the week. Thank you. Sigh. Right. Now, geez, I'm crackling all over the place. I'm definitely going to get another mic next week. You're going shopping, aren't you? I'm going shopping. I'm going to buy <laughs> something half decent. So, Good. Yes. Yes. Excellent. Yes, my, my $20 mic has seen the end of its days, I think. Oh, it only lasted 39 episodes. It did all right. It did all right. Yes. <laughs> well, actually, it's... less than that because the first mic was that big Yeti one. You know... <laughs> Technically, I could use this other one over here, and it doesn't do a bad job, actually. I put it on the other day and just tried, trialled it out. Yeah, but when you say it doesn't do a bad job, does that mean it does a crappy job, but it's okay, or it, it does do a good job? You've lost me, Pip. <laughs> anyway, so your podcast pick of the week, Paul. Mm, what did I write down? Wait, did you tell me to write down? That's the one. Um, I've got here... Mating Matters. Mating Matters, that's right, yes. Tell us about it, Paul. Mating Matters. Now, Mating Matters hasn't been around for a very long time, so it consequently doesn't have a lot of it's, – it's So when you say a, not a long only, time? Well, it's, I think it's about up to episode six or seven sort of thing. But I thoroughly enjoy it. Every Thursday it drops and I jump onto it and grab it and drive home from Wagga listening to it. It's great. And what's it about? Uh, essentially, it breaks down human sexuality and the behaviour of uh, how we behave as sexual beings, and it looks at it from an evolutionary standpoint. Okay. Yes. <laughs> what what, what was the last episode you listened to? Basically, it breaks it right down to what why people do what they do and how they choose their mates and why they choose their mates and everything like that. So, if you're interested in the opposite sex. Or even, in fact, if you're interested in your own sex, it's entirely possible, you know. Or however, what are we up to now? There's 32 genders or something like that. Didn't you know that? 32? Oh, something like that. It's in the 30s, I think. Jeez, I'm really far behind. Yes, I know. Well, welcome to the world of the millennials, you know. So Okay. Yeah, try and stay hip. Try and stay with it, Pip. You know how uncool that sounds. Well, I can pull it off. I knew the number, sort of, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> wow Wow <laughs> Yeah, so, um, yeah, look, I, I find it uh, quite a uh, entertaining Like, she's a doctor and, and um, she looks at everything from an um, evolutionary standpoint And I really applaud that and, and everything she says makes a great deal of sense And she really, and she's entertaining as well and she, Everything's very well thought out, I think Okay. Yeah, it's well worth it. Look, it. Just pick one, have, have something that interests you, listen to one. If you like it, keep listening to it. And, and for you, Pip, thoroughly recommend it. I think it's right down your, your alley spout. 
Okay, cool. I will put it on my list because mm. I'm still listening to um, Popcorn Psychology from last week. Have you listened to Gaslight? No, I'm frightened to do so. <laughs> You've put me off by going, oh, it's awful. Can I, <laughs> can, can I suggest that just listen to the first 10 minutes? Just listen to the first 10 minutes of one. Because then, because oh. I think they're, they're I it think they're at terrifying. the point. Well, I think they're at the point at this at this point in time that they tend to be repeating themselves a bit. Okay. So yeah, if you listen to the first one, you've you've got the last five episodes under your belt. Okay. Yeah, but they're not too too hardcore, right? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Define hardcore. Oh no! I just you know my cupcakes, rainbows, unicorns. Oh no! I don't. I, have you still got them? They're there somewhere. In the in the paddock out back. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. So that's um uh that's mating matters. Mating matters. Okay. Mm. So this week, yes, we watched two older films. Yes, because we watched a whole heap of new films for the Academy Awards. Yep. Um, but this week, the first film we watched was The African Queen. The African Queen, Pip. You know that's the repetitive part in this. You I don't, don't care. Do you know how much <laughs> pleasure it gives me to ask you this question each know, and every time? But you were just telling me before when you press record yes. that I make I change it up and I do things I differently know. and blah blah blah. And I'm like, do you? Do you really? Consistency is not the defence of small minds. <laughs> but you ask me the same thing. Yeah, I know. Twice. And, and you know week. what? It makes me feel the same each time I ask it. <laughs> oh, gosh. Pip, can I have a synopsis, please? And one day I'm going to say no. Well, you know what? We have to stop it here. After her brother dies while on mission in Africa at the start of World War I, Royce, Rose Sayer convinces reluctant steam captain Charlie Allnut to travel down a rapid-infested and German-guarded river to destroy a German gunboat. The bloody Germans, eh? Right? <laughs> eh? They're always the oh, ones. Just, yeah, just, they just cause trouble wherever they go. Oh, gosh. Mm. Mm. Pip, you picked this one? Yes. Do you what? know why I picked this one? Curiosity? Well, it kept coming up as an example film when they're discussing what makes a good film. And I thought, oh, okay, I haven't seen this film. Mm-hmm. I better watch it since they keep discussing parts of it. Um, and I haven't seen it, and therefore I thought it would make more sense if I watched it. Okay. So I said, Paul, let's watch The African Queen, which is a 1951 film. Mm-hmm. Mm. It felt 51, didn't it? <laughs> didn't it? <laughs> it was quite dated in many aspects, but I I know where you're going to go on this, but let me let me hear What do you mean? I want to know where you think I'm going to go. Put, let's put a shot over the bow No, no, no. What do you think? Where do you think I'm going with this? I think you're going to go and you go, it was poorly acted and, you know, and the, no. the characters didn't make sense and he shouldn't have, there's no reason why I should have fell in love with her no. because she's such a cow and... No. I found, okay... I found her character going to the full extreme of wanting to blow up that German gunboat. Very quick. Well, it'd be different if her her brother had been killed by the Germans. But what happened was, so she and her brother are in, um, you know, they're doing the missionary work in Africa and um, the Germans come and collect all the townsfolk, um, all the Africans, and take them away to be in their army. Let me finish. Then he goes a bit silly, I assume, with fever and dies. So he doesn't actually get killed by the Germans, and he yet she goes. A, all- he goes a bit silly and dies. He was a raving lunatic because <laughs> he was out of his brain on fever. Yes, I know, but what I'm saying is, he wasn't killed by the Germans, and yet she takes a passionate "I'm against the Germans, I'm here for my country" sort of setup, which is very un. Okay, can I, can I defend her motivations a little bit here? 
go for your life. All right. What, maybe, what made her go, whoa, I hate maybe, Germans well, so much? Perhaps you've picked, missed a few little critical points here. Critical point number one, they'd spend a, 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 quite Ten a, years. Ten years. No, I didn't miss that point. I heard the that. Godforsaken Belgian Congo. Yes. Um, and the Belgian Congo genuinely was forsaken because yes. it's run by the Belgians. I, I listened to the um, podcast yes. on it yes. in um, Behind the Bastards. Yes. Yes. Now they actually they actually went and they filmed it on site too. Yes, which, I saw that. Which we'll get to that in a minute because yep. I did a little bit of research on that. Oh, so. go you. Go me. Look at me, <laughs> hey? Look at me go. <laughs> I'm so considered. <laughs> <laughs> Just conceited. <laughs> so, um, okay, so she's there with her brother. Yes. She's given up a life of her own with her own marriage and no, everything I got like that. that. Okay, so, you know, she's making a sacrifice. So no, she's already was... pre-primed. Yes, I'm fully aware. Okay. Now, she's probably put a lot of emotional effort into these people. Yes, and not to mention the the brother when he's raving is saying basically that she's, you know, Got nothing. She can never German achieve. German led troops, organised by the Germans, sent by the Germans, come into her village, and basically burn everything to the ground and take everybody that she knows and loves, and takes them off for slavery. And the grief of that sends her brother mad and dead. Do you know what? I didn't feel that they were really loving those people. I know she'd said she'd been there for ten years. Yes, but I didn't get the vibe that they cared about those people as much as that. Okay. Can I also defend now? Look, I have to say that you, you, you're. I think you're probably saying that her acting is giving the impression that she didn't really care about them that much. But can I just say, at that point in time, when she was in the Congo there, she was really, really, really sick. That's why she... she no. Did you, did you notice how much weight she lost at the start of the movie? No, she was... She was sa- Skeleton. No, she was the same weight. No, at the start of the movie, at the start of the movie, she was thinner than what she was further down the track. Okay, I didn't notice. All right, and the reason is because she shat half of it out. Did you want to extend on that? She had dysentery, she had fever, she had Are you all talking outside the film? Outside the film. Okay. I didn't notice that, so they've done a good job she was dressing her up. So she was flat didn't out sitting up there playing the organ like that. Okay. She was being a trooper. All right. Yep. Um, well, I just want to say, from what I gathered, I didn't feel that either of them loved those people. Yep. Um, so when she went totally, that's it, I'm taking on the Germans, I was like, why are you doing this? Because the script says so. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And and she, her get, acting her acting was like the case that she was sitting upright. Can I is say giving her the points when she was with um, Humphrey Bogart on the river? I actually found her acting was you know she made the decision, mm-hmm. she stuck to it. I actually thought it was fine. I actually was with her once. I just got over the fact that yeah, she, that's yep. what she wants to do. Yeah, it was. It I was didn't a, think she had a right to decide that, but once you decided, I could go along. It with was it. a fast turn, I know, but I'm sure Catherine Hepburn, being the consummate actor that she is, would have been able to put in a better performance if she wasn't near death. But um, no, I'm just because in that in the church scene and no in the, all of that section there, she was. Very critically Yeah, but Ill. people aren't going to know this. People are going to no, watch the film I and go, know. well, hang on, why is she so – they could have – what the directors, I'm saying, could have – or and the writers could have done yep. is maybe had her brother killed by these German soldiers and therefore she's got incentive to sure. take on but these But she Germans. would have been able to add that in if she was feeling better. No, well, she couldn't have because that's not what's written there. Oh, she would have made it happen. I'm telling you what I gathered, Paul, was that I didn't see her drive – it shouldn't have been there unless like, – if her, her brother was killed and shot by the Germans, then I'd be like, oh, yeah, she should go and take on that German gunboat. But I'm like, well, hang on, he's died of fever. You know, they haven't done anything to her house. They've not done nothing to her. So so I just don't see how, you know, her incentive to go and take on these guns, these German gunboats, you know, in a dangerous format is just I, – I find it a bit weird. Um, but once I can get over that – and she's travelling down the river with um, Humphrey Bogart's Charlie Allnut. I'm all for that. I actually found the boat ride really interesting. Mm. Some of the love scenes, because obviously they didn't have the chemistry. You know, well, no, no, no. I actually found the chemistry fine. Did you? Did you? Yes, I, didn't. I found no. I found it fine. But mm. what I find in more recent. 